right now. Four-time Angler of the Year. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking like a leaf. Former FOW Cup champion. That's what I'm talking about. God has blessed me so tremendously in my career. Welcome everyone to David Dudley Outdoors and we're going to talk about a very popular subject. We're here in two, at the end of 2020 and the forward looking sonar has gotten extremely popular within the fishing world. But one thing I want to explain to you guys is how to read what you're actually looking at and explain to you why sometimes fish actually show up as fish on your screen and why sometimes they actually show up as dots. I'm going to teach you why some fish draw out better than others and why some fish don't draw out as best as they could. It's a lot to cover guys and I hope you stick with me because we're about to learn a lot on the subject of forward imaging looking sonars. Okay so let's talk a little bit. I hope you guys have enjoyed my art and craft crafting that we're about to display here. So give me thumbs up if you like my trolling motor and you're probably wondering what this pink image is, okay? This is actually the forward looking transducer that are gonna be mounted on trolling motors. Trolling motors is what powers your boat around uh, maneuvering wherever you go. It's what looks around in the water. So you basically you're using your trolling motor with the transducer mounted on it. And this, guys, this is the cone. This is gonna be a very important subject. So guys, you have to follow me on this for this to make sense to you, why fish draw out sometimes, and why they're just a blob or might be a dot. But I'm gonna to prove to you that fish may not be the exact size that you think they are, even with forward-looking imaging. So let's talk about this. So let's talk about sonar and how it works. This is very important for you to understand this lesson that I'm about to give you so you can catch more fish, understand what you're looking at when you are looking at your screen. A lot of people get confused. So sonar, your transducer, what does it do? Your transducer basically throws sound in a direction in the water. And what happens is that sound comes and reflects off of an object. It could be a tree. It could be a fish. It could be a lot of different things, but yet it's going to reflect off and throw back to the trolling motor. So let's pretend this lens is the actual cone, the trolling motor. So you're throwing a sound to me, it's bouncing off the fish, coming back to you and drawing it out as it sees it in that transducer. Same thing with the tree. Now, there's some objects that are gonna be harder than others and some objects that are gonna be soft. We're gonna get into that and I'm gonna wreck your mind when we get into that subject. Okay, so now that we talked about how the sonar throws out sound, it echoes back, it comes back to the transducer, from the transducer back up to the unit to where we can actually see what's going on. It's done all through sound. But here's what I wanna to explain to you is this, the further we get out in the cone zone, so that cone is gonna be narrow within, let's say first 10 feet, as it gets out, it's getting wider and wider and wider. Now, when it gets wider and wider and wider, say we're going 40 foot, 60 foot, 70 foot, the, the echo is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. So as you can see, this would be strong, 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 weak, weak, weak. And you know, there's no telling on, on uh, the units you have, you know, you can put your settings at, you know, looking for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60. You can set it to whatever you like. I prefer having it at the 70 foot, looking forward at 70 foot. Sometimes if I'm looking at brush piles or looking for trees or objects, I'll bump it up to a hundred foot away because I'm really not looking for very fine details as far as fish is concerned. I'm just looking for 
objects that are maybe be a hundred foot away. And again, guys, if I'm scanning for rocks, rocks are going to echo back very strong. Uh, if you got brush piles and it's not a hardwood like oak tree, if let's just say it's a pine tree, a Christmas tree, or bamboo trees that are out in the water, it's not going to throw a very clear image to you because it's a softer wood. Uh, the sound might absorb a lot of it instead of it reflecting back. So if we were to see a boulder, that boulder is going to throw an echo back really strong. So depending on what I'm looking for, I will set my distance of what objects I'm looking for. Now that we have our sonar, now that you have an image of what's happening underwater as, it, as the cone goes broader, let's talk about fish. One of the biggest misconceptions uh, in forward-looking imaging is that there's an argument going around saying, hey, you know, this, this company or that company, they're not drawing fish out like the other company and this company's better because I see their, all their images are fish. And this company, all their images are just blobs or dots. Gosh, you guys are driving me nuts. Every one of you guys that are saying this company, that all their fish are drawn out like fish, you are, you're lost. You, you don't even have a clue what you're talking about. And I'm going to blow your mind and let you know and prove to you that you have no clue what you're talking about. You don't even get the concept of sonar imaging. You're just so brand associated that you can't even see the truth in what's going on in the water. You're just, you're so biased. So let me shut you guys up. Let me explain to you what is going on, okay? So when you are forward looking and for all you people that say hey this company all their fish draw out like fish okay let me explain to you so we're going to use this camera lens pretend this camera lens is the sonar that the forward looking sonar this camera lens is the transducer okay so let's take Billy Bob here, Billy Bob. The echo in the sound is coming this way, right? When the sound is coming this way, it is gonna hit every piece of this fish. It's gonna hit its tail, it's gonna hit its middle, it's gonna hit its everything of this fish. And it is gonna draw out, especially with Lawrence. Lawrence is as crystal clear as you can get. It is unbelievable the clarity in it. So let's just say this lens is the sonar. It's the transducer. So it is echoing off of a lot of this fish. It throws it back to the transducer and it draws out a fish. So here's for all you myth, here's, here's the myth busting thing in this whole deal. Now, let's take this fish and he's just sitting in there and he moves. And when he moves and he's facing the transducer, guess what he's drawn out like? A dot. And I don't care what company you're with, all he is gonna be is a dot because the only sound echoing back to the transducer is his nose. Now, as this fish starts to turn sideways, guess what's happening? The echo starts getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And then all of a sudden, guys, there's a fish. But guys, you gotta understand that it's not gonna draw a fish out Every fish that's in the water, it's not going to draw it out. These fish are moving, and the echo is just going to hit them stronger and hit them less. Hit them stronger and hit them less. So it all depends on how, how that fish is positioned. Now, here's another myth. For the guys that say, oh, look at that big one. That's a big one. <sighs> ho, 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 hold on. If I got a five pound bass facing me like this and I see him and I'm like looking at my screen and I'm like, ah, that, yeah, that's a little one. 
And then all of a sudden, there's a two pounder over here, a five pounder over here. The echo comes off of this one and he's 20 more foot away. We're like, oh my gosh, look at that one. That's a giant. That's a big fish over there. Ho, 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 ho. This little dot that's sitting here, this little blob that's on your screen, he's the big one. So you can't claim that because you see the whole body of the fish that it's a big one. Now I wanna explain something to you. There's a lot of videos going around of these fish, uh, promotional videos where these fish, you see them come in, they turn, you see their whole tail move. You see all this movement and it looks beautiful like a fish, looks gorgeous. Now, the bigger the fish, the more echo you're gonna get back, the stronger the signal that the transducer is gonna pick up. Now, let's pretend that we're graphing and we see a carp. We see, well, number one, we're not gonna know what species it is. You can put logic in behind it. So here's one thing I wanna to explain to you about forward-looking imaging. You can kind of relate fish to where they're located to try to figure out the species that you're fishing. So if I'm in the winter time and I see, you know, 40 dots or blobs or fish sitting on a tree, pretty much that's gonna be a crappie. If I see a single fish just kind of cruising out in the middle of nowhere and it's pretty big and it gives me a big image like this, and I'm in a lake that has stripers or carp, then I can maybe assume that it's carp. So a lot of these fish that you see, you gotta put logic in behind uh, territory that they're at. You can't really necessarily say, but you can get a pretty good guess of what fish you're throwing at. So let's just say this, the, if you got a big fish, and just like in these promotional videos, there is so much room for it to echo off of that when this fish comes in there in a promotional video and all that echo is hitting the side of that fish and then you see him go out of sight, of course, the bigger the fish, the better it's gonna draw. But when you're bass fishing, we're looking for 14 inch bass, we're looking for 12 inches size limit in some places, or two pound or three pound. Again, guys, that's relatively small for forward looking transducer for what's going up, for what's coming back and reading to us. So again, here is a big fish, a giant fish. And when he's looking you in the face, you're just like, yeah, that's just a little one. But then all of a sudden, let him turn, let him turn. Guys, you're getting the point. Now I do want to go a little bit deeper and say this, okay? I, I put this one out as far as a crappy and we have what I'm gonna call a bass. Crappy with these forward looking imaging is like phenomenal, okay? Phenomenal, they draw up wonderful, wonderful. And guys, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button, and I have a lot more videos coming at you. I'm actually going to give you a 2D seminar. I want to teach you what you're looking at in 2D as well as uh, forward looking. I'm going to give you lessons on what to look for with structure scan. Guys, there's a lot I have to cover. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit it now and we will uh, continue to talk to you through my YouTube channel. So this right here is a crappy. Now, all fish have different size scale. The stronger the echo that comes back, the better the picture is gonna draw, okay? So, let's just say a carp, for instance. He's got very big scales, tough, it's hard to even get a fillet knife through it. Guess what, guys? That fish is gonna throw a very strong echo back at you. Now. When crappie are sitting still, crappie sit still, they do not move much, okay? They're a white muscled fish, so they don't move much. So a crappie that is sitting still, he's got pretty big scales on him also. And bouncing off a crappie coming to the sonar, he's gonna be broad and we can see crappie like crazy. He's flatter, he's tall, he's tall in his size. Now, let's talk about a bass. This one is gonna 
throw a incredible image to you. Now bass, okay, let's talk about Billy Bob here. Bass are a little bit more torpedo-like. They're not as broad as a crappy. Now, the the if you hit a bass directly, like shtoop, the strongest echo is going to come through the mid part of his body. Now, the more round that he is, the sound could not, it might not be echoing straight back. Okay, as it hits the curve and the sound hits the curve, it could, it's not, it's not coming back to you. It's going, you know, it's not coming back as clear as it should with a uh, crappy or whatever it may be. So fish are going to draw up different. Okay, fish are going to draw up different. We can talk about a shad. Okay, let's take, a, for instance, this shad. Okay, we got LY, we got thread fin. There's shad that actually herring have thicker scales. I can tell you, and this is probably blow your mind, I can tell you what kind of shad I'm looking at just by the echo. Now, shad being drawn up on forward looking imaging is not going to be, they're not going to show you all these tiny little fish. Shad, for the most part, are just skin related, very thin scales, and the sound is pretty much going to absorb their through their body. It will show you very, 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 very fine details, but uh, shad is not going to, the way we know it's shad is because they're typically in a ball and it throws a stronger echo back. When you see a big cloud of dots, that's making the, the signal get stronger. Now, as you're going, you can see how tight a ball of shad is just by the condensity of them. So if you are looking around and you're looking at shad, one way to tell if fish are actively feeding in them is if that ball of shad is super tight. If it's a loose ball of shad, you can tell by moving your trolling motor around. If you can kind of if they're kind of weak, it's not a big glow, it's not a big ball, then probably they're just chilled, they're not threatened, they're not anything. But you turn that trolling motor towards a ball and it's like super bright, the shed are really balled up, nobody wants to be on the outside, well guess what? Pretty much you probably can look around that ball of shad and find some uh, fish that are feeding in on them shad and probably catch them, okay? So guys, I hope you have learned a lot. I hope you have learned how to read your forward-looking imaging. Now, Lowrance has their new active target out. I am a huge Lowrance fan. What they have done with their technology has been incredible. I got time behind other companies that have forward-looking imaging, and I have a lot of experience looking at both uh, forward-looking transducers and I can, I am like ecstatic on how crystal clear Lowrance has done with their active target. Guys, if you haven't checked them out, check out Lowrance in their uh, new forward looking imaging, which is called Active Target. And I can't wait to start the 2021 season on the Bass Pro Tour using this. I, I just, I can't wait. Catching fish is all about the detail and having such crystal clear detail in this Lowrance Active Target. Guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We talked about that earlier. Thank you for all your support. And now I'm gonna actually get my little fish to, we're gonna do it with the, we're out.